Man, that is um, that is unbelievable that Auburn is out of this basketball uh, tournament, losing to Yale today. We'll get instant reaction here. Hopefully, uh, be joined by a couple other people. Uh, Taylor Korn is heading to the Auburn locker room in Spokane as we speak. Um, she uh, there to cover UAB, who's already out today. There to cover Auburn, who has now been surprisingly eliminated, and then there to cover Alabama, all in one venue. But our home state teams are 0 and 2 so far, with Alabama tipping off uh, in about uh, 40 minutes as that game runs a little late there. But when it's all said and done, Yale gets the win. Auburn had some chances there uh, at the end, um, and we'll get to your comments here. But my first, my first comment is is that never looked like the Auburn team we saw up in Nashville or a lot of time throughout the season. They never played with the the same rhythm they they usually play with. They never played with the same swagger that they usually play with, the same pace. Uh, they played a little tight, uh, especially as the game went on in the second half. And if you guys listen to me over the years, you know one thing I don't do especially in basketball, has come on and complain about officiating. But I don't think that game was officiated very well, nor do I think it was officiated the same way at each end of the floor. Um, and then there's the, the Chad baker Mazzara ejection. I know what happened earlier. I know what happened earlier, where the, the slap or the push to the, to the throat happened. But you can't, you can't retaliate. You just can't retaliate. Because you never know, that's going to be one. That's going to be the one they see. It's going to be the one they see, and then you get ejected. And I sort of agree with Charles. I don't think it should have been a flagrant two, an ejection. I think Bruce said that at the half. But you just can't give him an opportunity to kick you out of the game. And he's such. I said all week long. I thought he was the most important player for Auburn, and then he's out in the first three minutes of the game in the NCAA tournament. You got you got to control your emotions. I know you got pushed in the throat or slapped in the throat, or hit in the throat. You can't retaliate. You let you let your scoring get back at that guy. Um, too good of a basketball team. Too good of a basketball team to be out of the tournament to a team like that, to yell. To a team like that. 25 fouls on Auburn, 19 on Yale. Um, and I'll get to your comments, but... I mean, just look, there was one moment in the second half, four straight turnovers, four straight turnovers, and a three-minute streak of no scoring at all for Auburn. Not just um, – not they, they didn't look like themselves. An 83% free throw shooter in Trey Donaldson with two free throws to tie it, and he misses the first one at the end. Um, just, just not – the same Auburn team we saw year long, even in losses, even in losses in Tuscaloosa, in Knoxville, where they lost tough road games, that team played differently than they played today. I don't know if it was nerves. Yale definitely, um, Yale definitely um, controlled the pace of the game. Your comments in a second. Uh, but let me bring uh, Lance in here and get Lance some comments here. Lance Taylor joins me now. Uh, this is all brought to you by our friends at Autograph. Uh, Autograph is the app. You download it. You get Auburn content, Alabama content, your favorite teams. Use the promo code TNR, the promo code TNR. I don't know how much of that you heard. I'll let you speak about the game. But for me, Auburn never played with swagger, never looked like themselves today. Well, I got to be honest with you. I didn't see – so we were at walk-ons, and when I left, I was in transition. I didn't see the, the Chad baker Missouri. Uh I still haven't seen the flagrant foul, and I haven't seen the ejection. And obviously, you know, a player of that caliber, that's probably the difference on whether or not Auburn wins this game. But, you know, I think down the stretch, you know, Yale didn't make free throws. Auburn, obviously, when you've got Denver Jones and Trey Donaldson at the line, those are guys that – they're almost automatic. When you're talking about – 85 plus percent from the free throw line. So I don't know, man. It's a weird, there's something going on with the SEC. And <laughs> like, this is great. Like, when Florida just tied that game, and I'm going to, so random, I'm at a place you know you'll recognize for a random karaoke birthday party that started at five o'clock. And they couldn't do the first karaoke song. They told him, 
until the Auburn game was over. So when the Donaldson foul occurred, I was like, buddy, you're not going to be singing for a while. It's going to overtime. Yeah. Uh, but watching Florida, Colorado, when Florida tied it up, I was like, this thing's going to overtime. Florida's going to win this game by 8-10. to 10. And I don't know what's going on, by the way, because I still think the SEC, these teams, like Auburn, like Florida, like Kentucky, are really good teams. And I, I don't know, man. This is crazy, crazy stuff going on. Yeah, the SEC, if you're not familiar with what LT is talking about, Florida lost to Colorado. So only Tennessee, the regular season champions, have won. Auburn, Florida today, Kentucky, Mississippi State, and South Carolina yesterday, one in five, the SEC with AM playing right now and trailing Nebraska 2014. So if they don't win, they're one in six. And then Alabama has Charleston. There is a chance um, that uh, you wake up tomorrow or go to bed tonight with one SEC team or two SEC teams, and one of them is Alabama, depending on how Alabama does tonight. But let's talk about this game. And I won't keep you long. I know you're at a party, and we'll get to reaction after you go. And I appreciate you joining me for a second. I'd rather I'd rather sit on with you for a couple of hours, but <laughs> it's well, back in here, unfortunately. Well, well, if you if you can give me if you can give me ten minutes, we're gonna, not going to stay on this long uh, because it's just a. I, I mean, I would love to hear what you thought. Um, we talked about the ejection. Until you see it, you can't talk about it. But I will tell you that the Yale player, I think his name is August Mahoney who will grow up to be a villain. He'll be a politician that somebody hates, or he'll be a villain in a 1990s movie, just a smarmy-looking kid. He Going down the, the floor, he sort of back-punched or back-slapped open-handed into the throat of Chad Baker Mazzara. Uh, the play continues. Well, coming back down the floor, way behind the play, Chad Baker uh, sizes him up and throws an elbow. And they go to the monitor they rule it a flagrant two. Uh, Charles Barkley and many people, Bruce, thought it should have been a flagrant one, not an ejection. Uh, but he sized him up and threw an elbow. Um, and I do think Chad Baker was much more severe than what the, the, the Yale kid did. But Chad Baker is an emotional player. I said all week long, I thought he was the spark plug of this team. And to lose him basically three minutes into the game was devastating for this team. Yeah, and again, I haven't seen it, but based on what you're telling me, I mean, you just got to have a little composure in that situation. And, uh, you, can't, you can't retaliate. I, you know, it's crazy because now we'll completely forget how good this Auburn team was. I mean, you know, at the end of the season, winning six consecutive games, winning the tournament in Nashville, and winning those six games by 18.8 .8 points per game, they were dominant. And yeah. I like, I thought Yale might give them a little bit more than they thought. I said initially when we saw the bracket, I was like, I just watched Yale. And if Brown makes their free throws, Yale's not athletic. I don't – and Danny Wolf didn't have a big game. So, I, I can't even really make sense of this. I mean, this is truly another example of March Madness, why we love these first couple of rounds. But if you're an Auburn fan, in the venue I'm in right now, there is a ton of Auburn fans. And they're, they're just in shock. Like, they never thought – until it was all zeros. And I really, I thought I was going to hit a final shot. I thought this thing was, I thought they were going to win the game with a walk-off. But uh, I think people are just in shock. And they never thought they were going to lose until the game was over. Yeah, I know I am. I mean, I, I know some people think I was joking, but I really thought this team was good enough to win the national championship. I really did. But, you know, that's, and you bring that up, and I, and I said, look, I wouldn't be surprised at all. My only problem was the draw, but you can't blame the draw now. Spokane going out there sucks, but... The fact is, if you can't beat Yale, you know, they, this kind of negates all of that argument. Yeah. Um, let's let's get some comments real quick. Um, but, you know, you've seen you've seen guys have careers and John Pulakitas had a career night, 28 points, and he did it in step backs and um, heatly contested shots. He was just having one of those nights where everything fell for him. Everything. And, look, he had a terrible foul there on one of the last possessions to put Auburn on the line. Help me out with this because I thought possession error was yelled, and I couldn't – I can't hear in this place I'm at. There was no sound on the game. But it looked like a loose ball tie-up, and I thought possession was to yell. But then Auburn gets possession, and then ultimately the block that was called a foul and Donaldson goes to the line and misses the free throw. But was was it ruled a timeout? What what happened there? Um Okay, say that again one more time. I was I was trying to find so, the next comment. So Yale had possession arrow, and the ball goes on the floor, 
and there's a tie up. And so I thought possession was to Yale and then Auburn inbounds it. And it's when Donaldson was fouled and he missed the first end of the free. Yeah, throw. no, no, the possession error was Auburn. It was playing okay. Auburn. Yeah. Okay. So it was Auburn. Yeah. All the situation said Yale. Yeah. Um, uh, rolling through this, uh, state teams, oh, oh, and three is what they're projecting says, Matt doesn't think Alabama gets the win. Uh, to, well, I guess they are zero and three cause you count Sanford. So Alabama is trying to get the first state win, uh, coming up, uh, Troy was an expletive in this, but I, I don't know. I don't know if you could tell in your venue. I also, I'm not a guy who complains about the officiating, but I didn't think these guys, and, and maybe that's some of the problem with the sec in this tournament. I, th- this this officiating crew, I don't think, called it fair on both ends of the court, LT. I think they were officiating one way for the uh, prep school white kids than it was the athletic kids from the SEC. Well, you know, I mean, you go back to, like, last night, and it seemed like, you know, we talk about blue bloods like Kansas get that call against Sanford. But here, I think sometimes you get teams or officials that maybe get caught up in the underdog story and – and I don't know, man. I've never officiated to that 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 level before, but it's almost like they get into like everybody that's not an Auburn fan in that venue. They're pulling for Yale, and it's almost like they get caught up in it. And you know, a fifty-fifty call leans one way. I mean, Auburn fans are exact. They're saying exactly what Troy is saying. The guys I was with, they were like, "This is this is insane. How bad the officiating is." Yeah, and Ben says the officiating in the Florida game was worse. Uh, I know Golden got a. Uh, got teed up in that game. He wasn't happy with the officiating as well. So absolutely crazy. Uh, Landmine Believer uh, played nobody in the non-conference, played one of the easiest SEC schedules, got the easiest draw in the SEC tournament, and y'all kept hyping them up all year long. Uh, Listen, when you schedule Indiana, who I think was supposed to be preseason top 15, USC, who I think was preseason top 25, and I forget the other out-of-conference big game, uh, that Auburn played. You can't help it if Indiana and USC uh, ends up being average uh, basketball teams. Um, th- I thought it was thought it was a pretty good schedule for those couple of games, and then you get into the SEC. Yeah, look, I mean, fact of the matter, I mean, say what you want. We saw what they did in Nashville. I mean, you know, you can say we hyped them up all year. Uh, we know Bruce Pearl's a hell of a coach, and people are going to go back and they're going to be like, take away the Final Four, and he's done absolutely nothing. Well, he's taken one of the shittiest basketball programs maybe that we've ever seen in the sec and they're relevant they're year in year out they're a top 15 team and i i really i mean i can't explain it i mean these crazy things happen um i thought maybe you would see this with san diego state just based on their style that they could really grind it out and frustrate auburn um i just didn't see this with yale i just didn't i mean this is this to me is absolutely i know they were only a 12 and a half 13 and a half point favorite at mybookie.ag but this was shocking uh, happens all the time in the tournament. Going in with momentum does not matter, says uh, Lance Taylor's neighbor there. New Mexico, you saw that. I mean, that yep. momentum didn't work. It didn't work for Auburn. You know, you flip the, the the script, though. I mean, Duquesne and NC State came in with all this momentum. They're not really good teams, and they look really good in the first round. So, again, I don't think there's a rhyme or reason to any of this stuff. Yeah. Um, you have Evan says, miss, missing an integral part of the team in Nashville – CBM shouldn't have gotten himself kicked out uh, in that contest. Uh, that's an Auburn fan there, Evan there. You shouldn't have. You shouldn't have. But I, th- I thought Auburn's depth could have overcome that. But, you know, I really believe CBM and Janai Broom were the two most important players on this team. And when you're without him, it just it, – it just as the game got tighter, there wasn't anybody there to make that big – Jalen Williams did sometimes, but – Sort of, you know, Chad Baker Mazar had sort of become that guy to sort of pull Auburn out of some ruts at times throughout this year. And him not being there, not even on the bench with his energy, I thought changed Auburn's dynamic the whole day. Yeah. So what happened at the end? Like I saw Broom, I saw, I don't know if it was an emotional thing or was he hurt. Like I, I bounced out here to jump on the stream yard with you. So was it Broom was just being emotional and coaches were consoling him or is he? I, he he had a, uh, you know, he went to the floor a lot in that contest, and he was already from back at the SEC tournament nursing a, a, a sore left knee, and then he had a left elbow from falling onto the ground a lot, getting knocked down, maybe trying to showcase a little contact to get a foul call. Uh, so he was uh, a little banged up, but also, um, you know, emotional. He was in tears. That was his parents that were out on the court with the coaches checking him out. 
hey, I'm going to get out just because I want to get home. I, I got to yeah. like watch these people sing a couple of songs and then I got to I got it. All right. That's Lance Taylor. Appreciate your quick comments here. I'll roll through some of your comments and uh, we continue on. Brought to you by our friends at Autograph. Autograph is the app that um, keeps you up to date as a fan, right? Autograph can give you um, a timeline. You open it up every morning. You pick your favorite team. Um, let's say you're an Auburn fan. You get on there, you'll get all the stories going on with Auburn spring football or well, the recount of this game, post-game reaction uh, from the coaches, Bruce Pearl. All you have to do is put in your email address after you download it, QR codes on the screen, or download Autograph uh, in your app store, and then put in your email address and the promo code TNR, promo code TNR, and that'll get you the Autograph app, great podcast and that kind of stuff. It all it all goes Uh Landmine Believer talking about Auburn's out of conference or Q rating there. Uh, I, dude, you can you can throw all the analytics at me you want to, Landmine Believer. I'm telling you that was a good basketball team. I saw them play in Tuscaloosa where Alabama fought hard to beat them. That was a, a game Auburn could have won, could have won. I saw them in Knoxville, um, a road game they lost. They could have won that game in Knoxville. And I have great respect for that Tennessee team and great respect for the Alabama team. So you can talk about Q wins and Q losses all you want. That's a good basketball team. You can come in with the analytics all you want. That's a good basketball team. There are teams with better analytics who are already out of the NCAA tournament right now. So you can keep talking to me about Q wins. They're on the line of having three Q1 wins. That doesn't mean anything when you play 40 minutes today where they didn't play their game. Had nothing to do with the season. Uh, they did not play their. They didn't play their game today. They got, and several of you are saying this. Uh, they have not seen Auburn play that much of slow down half court offense, slow down half court offense, um, all season long. Um, and I don't know if Yale was forcing that or if that was just how the pace of play was dictated. Uh, just it just didn't look like the same Auburn team. Um, ben says the SEC was not great this year. I only picked Tennessee to advance to the Sweet 16, and I have them out too uh, before they get there. I'm not that guy. I had Auburn winning the national championship, and I believed it. I had Kentucky in the Elite Eight. They're out now too. I have um, Tennessee in the Final Four. They're still alive. Um, had Florida in the Sweet 16. They're out now. Um, I had Alabama in the Sweet 16. They're about to tip in 10 minutes or 15 minutes from now. We'll be done with this before then so you can get back to that. So um, to be honest with you, I'm sitting here in the no BS zone. I don't, I don't want you bringing BS to me tonight uh, as we're sitting here. Taylor Korn, if you're wondering where she is, she is in the Auburn locker room. She is getting post-game reaction, emotional locker room, I'm being told. As you would imagine, she's getting post-game reaction. You will see that posted on all these platforms. Uh, coming up uh, this evening, set your alerts, follow us on all social media at next round live. You'll get the reaction. She's already got some UAB posts up there. You'll get the Auburn reaction there. Scott Forrester is working hard, kicking out the uh, stuff from the podium. You'll hear from Bruce Pearl and some of the players coming up from there. And uh, then uh, Taylor and Scott will be having Alabama stuff uh, later on tonight. We appreciate all the work they do. And we appreciate autograph and all of you for being here with us. QR code over there for my bookie as well mybookie.ag, bringing us our bracket challenge. Um, as we roll on, uh, NH3245, free throws, free throws and turnovers, always costly. I don't have, let me see if I can get the turnover number real quick um, because it was uncharacteristic of, of Auburn uh, this year. Uh, total turnovers, 14 turnovers uh, in that game. And um, 15 points off a turnover. But here's the number, man. As I look at this now, this stat sheet for the first time, uh, fast break points. Anybody want to know how many fast break points Auburn had today? They had 11. That's not Auburn basketball. That's not the way they usually play. 11 fast break points is all Auburn had today. Unbelievable. Uh, Harrison robbed again. Um, it will be a talking point, no doubt about it. Um, Ben back with the Gators officials. Thank you, Ben. Um, uh, Brian says you guys were way too cocky talking about Auburn after that fraud SEC tournament win serves you right. Dude, winning the SEC championship, uh, meant a lot last year. I'm, you know, to Alabama, I was there meant a lot to Alabama. Uh, and they went into the tournament, made it to the sweet, sweet 16, right? Went to the sweet 16. 
what we learn in this tournament, and we learn it every year, is that basketball is not like football. It's not. Little Yale can play with an SEC championship team. Um, Charleston may be able to play with Alabama in a little bit. Um, Oakland can beat powerhouse Kentucky. There's something about this tournament, man. Something about this tournament. It's unbelievable. Uh, Cody says, ultimate Jimmy Landmine picking Auburn to be national champs. Listen, I, I tell you guys afterwards if I if I really thought I was trying to landmine something. I was trying to win the bracket challenge because I thought Auburn would skate through their two games um, in, in Spokane. I didn't think Yale had the athletes to play at Auburn's pace, and I didn't think they had the athletes to make Auburn play at their pace. It turns out Yale, uh, when they had to, could play at Auburn's pace, and, and many times Auburn had to play at Yale's pace. And then John Pulakitas, I'll pull an LT here. Next time John Pulakitas scores 28 in the NCAA tournament, you guys can have a left, uh, you know what, right? I mean, it's just, uh, that was, a, it was an unbelievable shooting night from that guy. Unbelievable shooting night. Um, LT's two for one is getting warm. I don't know what that means. Two for one, two for one, two for one. Um, I don't know, but I know his, uh, I know getting four sweet 16 teams, I think is over with now, uh, um, which was a, a bet we had. I think that is a, a stake bet went from there. I never thought uh, that that would end up going the way it did. Uh, August Mahoney, of course, that's his name. He goes to Yale. Yeah, that kid is unlikable. Unlikable. As I said earlier, uh, I think it was Pablo Escobar, great Auburn fan on Twitter. Uh, he said, um, he was talking about how unlikable August Mahoney was. And I, I tweeted him and I said, every 80s and 90s movie I watched, he was the villain. He was the boyfriend that nobody liked or uh, the frat boy that nobody liked. That was August Mahoney today. And he's the one that got in it with Chad Baker Mazzara um, and probably ended up being the biggest moment in the game, the biggest moment of the game. All right, uh, a couple of more comments here. Remember, Autograph Autograph is the uh, app. You see the QR code there, but you don't have to use the QR code if you don't want to. Just go to your app store, download it. If you're a Bama fan joining us here, you can uh, make Alabama your favorite team. If you're an Auburn fan, you make Auburn your favorite team. All you have to do is put in your email address and the code TNR. And uh, what it ends up doing, and I will show you right now, I've got all the SEC teams as my favorite team. But it's this app right here, Autograph. I hit it. It'll load up. Uh, it's got some Auburn content here. Uh, it's got top uh, top listens. It's got some podcasts and stuff right here. Uh, it's got uh, post games, some highlights, uh, stories. It'll have football, everything in there. It's just all Auburn content. Same way if you got Alabama clicked, all the SECs. Uh, it's Autograph. It's a super app. Tom Brady's part of the ownership group. Download the Autograph app. Use the promo TNR, no cost, just your email address and the promo code TNR, and it's yours to use right there, and you get a great a bunch of great content there. We appreciate that. Royal Payne says, SEC, a paper tiger. Uh, not just talking about Auburn, talking about everybody. One in five is the SEC. And I, I – I think more shocking than Auburn's loss, which is 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 ninety nine point nine percent on the shock scale for me, is the fact that the SEC is one in five right now, because despite the injury, I thought Florida would advance. Uh, no way, I thought Oakland could beat Kentucky. No way, uh, I didn't expect South Carolina to win. I thought Mississippi State uh, could battle with Michigan State, but I you knew it was a losable game, coin flip game, and there's no way I thought Auburn would lose this game. Uh, nor did I thought they would lose to San Diego State. I thought this was going to be a um, a UConn Auburn showdown for the ages, and I hate we're not going to get this. I hate we're not going to get that. Uh, Everett says we want Taylor. Taylor's in Spokane. She is working. Uh, she will not be here live with you. She will have some comments that she will post uh, at some point here. Um, she'll she'll put out the business first, uh, the post game locker room reaction from your Auburn Tigers. And then she will be on, I'm sure, on, a, on the platform. So make sure you're following everything and, uh, and giving her thoughts. Absolutely uh, a crazy day so far in Spokane. JM says it's a uh, simple choke job. 
Um, simple choke job there. Uh, AM Golfer says, if I were done away, I don't think I'd go meet Little T at the airport. By the way, is she going to stay and cover the Bama game Sunday? Well, we've got to get Alabama to the Sunday game first. So far, the state's uh, 0-2 in Spokane and 0-3 and in the tournament. But she, she will be in Spokane all the way uh, until the end. Seth, uh, really good uh, young broadcaster. I'm supposed to believe the best defensive team all year would have their opponents in the bonus for 47 of their final 80 minutes of the season. Okay, he says there. Um, so that's, uh, that's a good point there by Seth on just, you know, you're one of the better defensive teams and you end up in that situation. Is little T okay? Yes, she is, Walker. She is a pro and she's in the locker room. One man banding that right now. Uh, Ryan, you only watch the Ivy League championship. You disrespected Yale. Um, I, I don't know if he's talking to other commenters or what. Uh, no, I do watch uh, some Ivy League basketball, uh, usually on a Friday night is when it's on my TV. And um, and, and I, I, I'm going to disrespect it again. It's not the same level basketball as the SEC. And we could line this game up and we could play it again in 30 minutes and Auburn would beat their eyes out um, because Pulakitas would not hit 28 again and Chad baker Mazzara would not get ejected again. Hey, but that's the way it works. It's the way it works. Um, that's why it's a wild tournament. If this was a best of three, best of five, best of seven, Auburn would be fine. They could come back and get them tomorrow, and then they could get them on, on uh, Monday, and they would still be in the tournament. Or get them on Sunday, and they'd still be in the tournament if it was best of three. That's just not the, just not the way it is. Just not the way it is. And I and listen, I agree with uh, Seth about, about uh, absolutely sham game. It was um, if if you're an Alabama fan, you better hope you got a better officials than than what I just saw here. And truthfully, what I saw last night in the Sanford game, um, UAB. You know, I thought I thought the, they let the, the San Diego State guys bully him around down low, and Yaks and the guy who got in foul trouble. But some of the calls against Sanford last night, including the big block at the end, was just horrible. And then I think these guys were clueless. They were even clueless on inbounds where the guys were shuffling their feet and moving. It was, it was stationary on that one play. It wasn't supposed to be moving. Dylan Cardwell called it out. And we didn't get a call. Didn't get a call. Uh, Ryan says, New Haven, Connecticut, best pizza in America. Uh, that's uh, Yale's campus, I guess, right there. I don't really know there. Um yeah, the TV bug said the possession was Yale, but the error on the court was Auburn. Back to what LT was talking about, the court rules. TV people sometimes forget to flick that switch a little bit. Um, all right, man. That looks good. All about the same officiating and just unbelievable, unbelievable shock and awe right here. I did not think we'd be sitting here. When I told Browns, I'm about to go to the Zach Bryan concert. Um uh, and I'll be watching Alabama on my phone. I told uh, Brown, I said, dude, you do post-game Alabama. I'll do post-game Auburn. And I did not think I'd be doing a post-game Auburn loss. Um, one more thought here. Brandon's got a good one. Played off energy and emotion all year, didn't execute down the stretch. They did. And, and that's what shocked me is they didn't have. They didn't have that energy and emotion tonight. And I don't know if that was because CBM wasn't out there. Usually uh, the other people bring it, man. Other people bring it. Um, guys, some of you guys are just <laughs> insensitive. If, if I put some of these up here, you guys would be like, and if it was an Alabama loss, you guys would be going ape shit over it. So I'm not even going to put them up there. Mm. Yeah, you're right about this. Portnoy's bet on UConn looks good for two million, a $2 million win. Hey, at least them getting to the final four. Who's left to battle them out there? And, boy, they look good today. They brought the injury. Jonathan says, thank you, CBM. You suck today. Probably shouldn't be too hard on, C on him. It looked like it was, you know, he was a big part of, uh, it was a big part of uh, getting you there. Got a championship in Nashville. All right, man. Auburn's out. Florida's out. Kentucky's out. Mississippi State's out. South Carolina's out. Texas A&M commercial break over my shoulder here. Texas A&M battling Nebraska. That'll be a hard fault night, game all night. And then Alabama's about to tip against Charleston. Let's see if we can at least have two SEC teams alive for the weekend. Right now it is just the SEC regular season champs of Tennessee. Um, great year, disappointing ending. 
for the Auburn Tigers. Uh, hopefully we'll see Janai Broom another year down on the Plains. Um, he's fun to watch. Um, other than that, that's it. More reaction coming up on our platforms from Taylor Corn and Company and Scott Forrester inside uh, the locker room, also on the podium, and then uh, Post Game Alabama on all the platforms as well. And Brown will be in this chair giving you reaction uh, to the Alabama game. So join us back on this platform. Go, go and watch the games now. Go and enjoy uh, the Alabama Charleston game. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Autograph. Don't forget to download the app. Use the promo code TNR. And uh, I'm now going to have to go listen to Zach Bryan sing something in the orange and then think about what could have been for this Auburn basketball team. We're back a little bit later on on this platform. We're the next round. Thank you, Autograph, promo code TNR.